for I've got all day. <laughs> Good afternoon, Neil O'Brien. How are you? Good afternoon. I'm great, thanks. I'm in your kitchen now, am I? You're in my kitchen, probably not for the first time. I'm not sure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I started this thing in my kitchen on day one of lockdown. And, um, yeah. So it was a, you know, it just grew legs. I started it off kind of as a bit of a rant just one day because Boris Johnson was in charge of my son in England. And I thought, oh, my God, I can't believe the way Jared Boris Johnson was handling COVID. And I was having a bit of a rant. I think it was like the 14th of March or something. And so yeah. the next day I decided, look, I'm going to talk to different people about it. And it just kind of grew legs. Right. And yeah. uh, so there's just been lovely people around the world, just different COVID sure. stories, really. And people's view of where it's going, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. So I try and pick really boring, dull people so I look fabulous. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, good. Yeah, well, you've so... chosen that. <laughs> That's, uh... <laughs> so, anyway, and what I really like to do is do the intro because people are crap at saying how good they are. Do you know what I mean? They really are bad at right. it. So, but you're probably the opposite. You'd probably say how fabulous you are. So, just to introduce you, just to introduce you. So, I know you're a long, long time. You're probably one of the best. Would I say business coaches in the country? Would a business coach? Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. 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 Great. Probably life coach. And yeah, well, probably still life coach. Sure. And actually, you inspired me to become a life coach um, okay. at one point in my career. And, uh, and so, business coach, yeah, you're unbelievably successful. Author. Author. Sure, yeah. It's great. Go Keep go going. Golfer. Yeah, you're doing really well. Keep going. Yeah, We've yeah, tried yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not sports psychologist, but you're not a sports psychologist. No, you're you do. No, because I, yeah, I, I work with sports people on their mental performance, but yeah. I'm not technically I'm not a psychologist, so I just yes. can't use that word. So. Yes. However, you do talk to psychologists and psychiatrists and all that kind of thing. Sure, yeah. You yeah. do. And actually, I was also at your one-man show in the Viking Theatre, which was fab. I have to say, we all laughed from beginning to end. Cool. Great. So, oh yeah. So that's just an, yeah. that's a good. That's a bit of a nutmeg. Yeah, that's a good start. I could do that next week. Yeah, you could. You can introduce me at something else next week. <laughs> Amazing. So tell me, um, where is? You know, first of all, your business, of course, is going to change shape because you were obviously a man to stand in front of large conferences all over the world. Yeah. Uh, talk people through stress, goal setting, all that kind of stuff. So what's what's happening in your business now? Well, uh, you, you mentioned the 14th of March. I think the, the, uh, the day before the Friday. So Friday the 13th of March, all work in my diary that had been booked, that was in my diary for the rest of the year, evaporated that afternoon. I got a ton of emails cancelling everything. So my diary is now as new as it was in the day I bought it. So, um, so that really hit me like a train. So that's... So, see, I'm, I'm regularly comparing this crisis perhaps to the financial crisis, you know. So, so the devastation of this has happened much faster than the financial one did. Like this was, like in an afternoon, we were afraid to leave the house, weren't we? So, so it's been fairly devastating, really. So that's the first thing. But then, having said that, and you, you know... I have successfully resisted technology for about 40 years, you know, um, dragging a flip chart around Ireland any time I'm speaking at a conference. I, I thought Zoom was like, you know, a superhero T-shirt. You know, I didn't. I, so I've had to embrace all of this webinar, communicating with each other like we're doing now in the last few weeks. So it has cured me of my fear of technology. So, so I'm actually really busy now um, speaking to organizations and, and managers and all that, just about the current crisis. And, and, you know, is there anything else we should be doing really? So it's, okay. so for about a month, yeah, I had no reason to get out of bed. And uh, now, now that has all uh, change, thank God. So I've a bit okay. of something to focus on. Okay, well that's good. Well, because I have to, there is definitely an ups. I mean, I'm this. I'm kind of. The, the, I was terrified of the whole technology side of it as well, and this has made me, you know, learn how to find the Zoom app, you know, as well as other yeah. apps. But um, 
I have to say there's definitely upsides to it in that you can instantly talk to somebody. You don't have to, you know, get in a taxi. You don't have to meet them in a hotel and spend an hour waiting on them, et cetera. So it's instant. And I do love the efficiency of that. But I also don't love the non-personal. Do you know what I mean? I prefer to be able to put my hand on your arm when I'm talking to you. Or, you know what I mean? I do like that personal side of it. And yeah. I, miss, I do say, I have to say, I miss that. I mean, we had our first board meeting on Sunday night and mm. it was Zoom. And like, it was just like, normally we all sit around the table. We're all, you know, everybody's very dedicated to the charity, as you know. And we all kind of talk through the children and the reports and the spreadsheets and the you know and to sit and look at the six or seven faces across the screen like just just after 21 years of doing it a different way it really you really do have to evolve in your brain you do and it, it will never replace the human contact of course not you know so that's fine so it has its uses for some things and it will never replace other things but going back to your question then about conferencing yeah, I mean, imagine now asking 500 people to all get into a room for a day at a, at a conference. Like now it seems, that seems alien to us now. That seems like suicide almost, you know, so that, so it is going to impact massively on the conference circuit, which is, which is a large part of what I do. But going back to just what we've just said, so, so if you want to have a conference to, just to inform people of things, you know, get all the staff together and tell them what we're doing next year and all that, I think all of that will stop. That's just giving people information. We can do yeah. that now in lots of different ways. But, but to make people feel a bit different, that energy transfer, you know, people want to be, get a bit of a lift or a bit of something, that's still going to have to, have to happen, I think, in a room. You know, I still don't think... Um, any amount of teleconferencing or webinar will it's give people to this necessarily. I, I yeah. think it's good for information, but so it will always be there. I mean, I, I sat in a room like this on my own right through the recession thinking, God, will people ever conference again? You know, and it came back with a vengeance. Yeah. So it, it will come back, but it but will yeah, be different. Like how? I mean, my, you know, my son, who I love talking about all the time, of course, pathetic Irish mother that I am. He's in LinkedIn and they're all very, you know, techie. And they were, he had a conference in July in Las, in Las Vegas and there was 5,000 of them going to it. They go, I think, nearly every yeah. year. And yeah. uh, mind boggling that kind of, you know, those big giant thing. I don't know yeah. how, they, I don't know how you book 5,000 hotel bedrooms, but anyway, they do it. Yeah. But now, of course, it's all cancelled. So the, now he would come back from them very lit up, very inspired, full of stories, telling me about different things that happened while they were there. Like, how do they get that, as you say, how do you get that, that magic, that energy back into some, like there's 5,000 of them supposed to be going there. So how, who's going to get that, that spark back into them? Well, you, you'll do it again, but you might do it with smaller numbers. You know, you, you just have to manage it differently. You see, what, what you're talking about there is similar to going to a rock concert or going to a comedy show you know there will always be those things there will always be those gigs you can't beat a live gig but but we don't know yet how will that happen though will, you know will you be allowed to get even a thousand people anywhere and do they still have to be two meters apart like these these are the things that but it will be figured out but 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 no the live gig by God, we all need one of those every so often, don't we, to keep us well, going? You, Nothing. You, I mean, you really do. If, if, you, if you're up against a really fabulous person, um, then, yeah, they're totally inspiring. I mean, you come out of them little. Mm. You know, the only good thing is maybe there'd be no more Anthony Robbins. But anyway, that's a personal comment from me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, so tell me, planning forward then, do you, so is there anything, I don't mean, this is not a personal question, but is there, is there yeah. anything? coming back into your diary saying okay 2021 we're going to have a conference for 100 people or what's happening in the next 12 months in the world in your world yeah i don't think anybody has really decided yet it would have been quite common for me on the corporate circuit to have bookings like that a year or two ahead you know um none of that is happening so i think people are just you know collecting themselves a little bit um they're, they're happy to do webinars for now. I did a webinar last week and there was about 600 people on it. Um, I have one tomorrow. Um, 
for a government department, and there'll be about 200 on that. Um, so, so they're happy to do that for now, I think, to keep okay. things... It fills the gap for the moment. Yeah, it's fine. And, and they're also, it's, it's kind of optics as well, isn't it? They're being seen to do something yeah. for the people, so that's fine. But, but nobody is thinking that far ahead, no. Yeah. So we don't, you see, we don't, we don't know yet, Debbie, what we're returning to. Like, I, I have a lot of companies on to me now saying, right, Neil, so come on, quick, um, give us some ideas. What would we do in September? What would we do in October, say, when we're all coming back to work? And I, I'm resisting all of that. I, well, hold on a second. Nobody knows really what we're going back to. So I'm not going to take a punt on here are my top 10 tips, you know, that will get yeah. us through. No, we? so we just we just have to hold our breath a little bit for now, I think. I think we really all do until we see by Christmas, is there going to be a second lockdown? Is there going, I mean, I was talking to my old neighbor this morning, she's in Singapore, and they were to be released from lockdown on the 1st of June. And they got news this morning that it's going on till I think she said the 10th of July. And she couldn't believe it. Um, yes. And because she just like, they're at the end of their tether, they've done their nine weeks. Um, but the figures have just zoomed because they've discovered that 20,000 people or something were dead that they weren't expecting or some yeah. weren't in the figures. Um, and she was shocked that they're going to be locked down. So nobody, we really are really on thin ice at the moment, which an awful yeah. people, Neil, are not able to be on thin ice. They're used to a solid foundation, you know? Oh, so yeah. No, this, yeah, this is, um, going back to March when this all kicked off, um, I was slightly bemused by a load of people in my line of work rushing forward with their top tips, you know. Now, they would have said at the start, oh, we're in unprecedented times, we've never yeah. experienced it before, and then they say, so anyway, here are my top 10 tips for working from home. And I'm thinking, hold on a sec, you've just said it's unprecedented. How can you suddenly then produce, you know, top 10 tips? So I think, yeah. so what do we do then? So I, I think it's like there are different stages to this. So. I think the first stage is cope, you know, just cope with it first, you know, just get through the day, you know, don't, can we, can we live, live together again, you know, and can we get on with each other? So I think that's kind of like a basic survival, prehistoric, pre-programmed response to a shock or a trauma is just cope with it first. Uh, then I think the next phase, which I think we're kind of into now then is, is managing the mood of the thing. You know, what, what's, the, what's your mood like these days? And is your mood a bit all over the place? Well, that's okay, because that's how it should be. So I've spent the last number of weeks in various coaching things, and when I'm talking to people, I'm, I'm, I'm resisting offering any sort of tips and techniques. I, I think people just need a bit of reassurance, really. Mm. I, I think they need that more so than... Um, than tips because we're not you see we're not working from home this is another thing that we oh, here's my tips for working from home no what this isn't working from home i've worked from home as you have for, for a very long time i chose to work from home because i knew i'd be the only person in the house most of the day you know yeah, that's what working exactly. from home is. yeah this, exactly. this, this is surviving from home mm -hmm. so, that's, so this is like health first life second work third you know so that's mm -hmm. where we're at so that so i'm really skeptical and a bit annoyed with people offering these off the cuff tips that they've had forever you know this mm -hmm. is it, that i don't think that helps but i do think people need a bit of reassurance though mm -hmm. uh, and i was talking to directors of a company the other day and they said we made a conscious effort two weeks ago to over communicate with all our staff so we're over communicating now and the feedback we're getting is fantastic so i i i, I had to then pop in with, well hold on a second when you say over communicating if you don't mind me saying so you're probably just doing what you should have been doing all the time mm -hmm. <laughs> you know you're mm -hmm. just making more of an effort so um so you can't over communicate you can't reassure enough i mm -hmm. think and uh, Neil, I had a coffee with you um, uh, maybe a year ago, and um, I was taken aback when you said to me, "I'm going." To, you said, "I'm going to work till I'm 80." Was that it? 80. You weren't <laughs> tiring. You were going to work right through. And I was thinking, "My God, that is a departure," because people obviously feel they get to 65 and then they're retiring. And you were probably the first. Per now, personally, I would completely agree with you. And mm. for me, at the beginning of the lockdown. 
I had this terrifying feeling of, is this what retirement is like? Because I couldn't bear it. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter if you get up late. Like it kind of doesn't matter what time you go to the shops. It doesn't matter what time yeah. you get emails at. And uh, it, I just got the scariest feeling that this is what retirement is like. And it scared me absolutely. Like the daylight's out of me. I hate it. So I did need routine. I definitely needed to know I had stuff on every day or I felt yes. like going into a bit of a slide. So have you still got that 80 year? Do you still feel you're going to work on? Do you still feel you want to work okay. on? Oh yeah, absolutely. So let, let's respond to a couple of things you've said. First of all, 10 years ago, the average life expectancy in the Metropolitan Police Force in London after retirement was six months. Life expectancy. So that means some people were dying after four months and other people are dying after eight months. Yeah, but so, so it's the moment they stopped working, they were in a very dangerous position um, because, because of what you've just said. They, they, they then had no idea who they were as a person and, uh, and what they were going to do. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, well, our pensions aren't, aren't you know, what they were cracked up to be, probably. So, so don't, don't, you know, so we don't have that luxury, maybe. But thirdly, and I, you know, I chose to do this. I, I'm really just doing what I love to do. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of doing my, I'm trying to get paid for my hobby. You know, that, that's so, so why would I stop doing that? I'm having too much of a good time. I, I still feel like I've, I'm only starting, you know. So, so as you mentioned in my introduction, I'm my kind of typical normal week would be coaching people and speaking at stuff. So every time, the more people I coach, the more stuff there is for me to learn, and the more stuff I have to learn, then well, then that gives me more to think about, and then maybe more to talk about. So, so I still feel I have a whole huge amount to learn too. So I have to learn. I'm having the time of my life, um, but I do, yeah, I do want to come up with a 20 year plan. And the final piece of jigsaw would be that a tarot card reader told me I'm going to live to be 93. So, okay. that's, so that's cool then. So I do have another, I'm, I'm 62 and a half. Okay. Uh, so I still have another good 20 years left in me, I hope, that I can okay. offer. Okay, I've no doubt you have. Um, Neil, I saw you, um, you lent yourself to our organization to talk to the children in, uh, on our Dublin project about stress, pre-exams and all that. You did a gorgeous session with them. I tell yeah. you, they, they could do it at the moment with all that's going on with the leave insert. But anyway, you did do it last year and we all sat down the back and we were taking notes ourselves. So, um, and it was very beneficial, just very simple things that you did. Actually, one of yeah. them I copied since, which was put the green dot on our, you know, you recommend to people put a green dot, something, a sticker on their phone. And every time you see it, you just draw a breath, you know, exactly. and remember where you are. And I did steal that idea from you a few times. But yeah. if you, with all that's going on at the moment, with the COVID payments going to end, people don't know where their businesses are. You're... Your, no, I don't mean your top 10 tips for stress, but certainly, do you have any golden nuggets that you would share with people that are feeling anxious, anxiety, not knowing what's next? Yeah. Um, firstly, I think it's just to, to touch on what we were talking about a moment ago, which is really is to accept that this is where we're at, you know, so that's, and if, if some days are awful, that's normal, you know, so, so our mood and our emotions, we're going to cluster all over the, the scale with this and that's absolutely perfectly normal and human and that's kind of how it should be so that's the first thing second thing is a moment ago you said which intrigued me i wrote it down you're saying about you know there are days where it really doesn't matter when i go to the shops it really doesn't matter when i get out of bed and that's actually that that was that's the first thing to change is no it does matter actually um see stress is usually i think a loss of discipline of some sort. We, we've, we've stopped doing stuff that gives us a source of strength, that makes us feel like we're in control of our day or our life. So sometimes that is we, we've lost touch with certain people who give us a buzz, or we've stopped doing certain things that used to be our routine. We love routines, you know, we, we, and this is part of this COVID thing is we've all had to establish a new routine now. It's a bit like, a bit like, like let's try and go back to normal for a moment. 
So in normal life, we had work routines, weekend routines, bank holiday routines. We just spend our lives going from one routine to the next. Mm -hmm. And then if we were lucky to go on a two-week holiday, the start of that two-week holiday, we spend building a routine for the holiday, you know. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the holiday, we're looking forward to coming back to our normal routine. Mm -hmm. So people are longing for a normal routine again. And we're trying to create something temporary at the moment. And that's the scary bit is what are we going back to? That could all be different as well. So stress is usually a loss of discipline. It's I've lost my shape. I've lost a routine that served me really well. So that's where um, I think we would start is let's look at a better routine than the one you have right now. Mm -hmm. So and what I'm after is can we punctuate tomorrow with a few moments of discipline throughout the day? force ourselves to do something, even for five minutes, that we know is good for us, but we mightn't be in the mood to do it. Mm -hmm. So I, I mightn't be bothered, and you know, it's the whole bothering thing. I mightn't be bothered to go for a walk this afternoon, I think I'll sit and eat more, you know. No, no, five minutes for that walk mm -hmm. is really, really important, actually. So, so what I would suggest is routines, structure, Mm -hmm. that involves us being a little bit tougher on ourselves now mm -hmm. that's um that's the start to to help cope with uncertainty and worry and anxiety so worry is mostly head stuff um, i'm worried about something mostly, but anxiety is head and full body mm -hmm. so so for anxiety the remedy has to be physical Mm -hmm. It has to be something that involves the body as well. Mm -hmm. If worry, we can kind of reassure a bit and distract you from it. When it becomes anxiety, though, now it's all it's all over. So we need your body has the answer. Mm -hmm. So we need walking. We need breathing. Those green dots, just for people who are listening in. Yeah, I buy them in a stationery shop. These little sticky dots that people use for calendars and things but I give them to clients and they stick them around their house and their home and work. And exactly as you said, every time they notice one, they just take a breath, just, mm -hmm. just pause for a moment. So uh, Ryder Cup golfers have used those, inter-county football hurling and game, football team. So why can't we use them as well? They're mm -hmm. just a little reminder, really simple, stupid thing. Mm -hmm. But that's what discipline is though. Mm -hmm. I started. Uh, I started meditating yesterday. My, I'm on day two, and uh, right. I'm following. Uh, I'm on a free app, thirty day free app from Sam Harris. Yes. And uh, it's it's really good, and I really resist. I, I resisted it, but everybody was. And of course, Oprah says you have to do it. You can't live without. You know, uh, yes. all the stars actually are hugely into it. Do you meditate, yeah. Neil? Yes. Do you meditate? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but now, but now you've raised, so to me, sometimes just, you know, I don't have to sit with my legs crossed. It doesn't have to be, it's not precious to me. It's not a sacred time or anything like that. Um, some days it's five minutes, you know. Mm -hmm. Probably the longest I'd ever sit for would be 12 or 15 minutes maybe. So it's, it's really important, but it's not sacred though. Mm -hmm. I think we grab a few minutes whenever we can. And even just sitting and staring into space for a moment and just having a few breaths, like to me, that's meditation. Mm -hmm. I don't have to have my particular whale music and I don't have to have, you know, a whole it's sanctuary. Kind of, no, it's, it's grab it. It's on the run. Mm -hmm. No question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm glad to hear. Yeah, yeah good. No, so. so there's a few things I've done now um, the, on the last two months. Now, I mean, bar, I am also working, I'm, you know, but I'm just trying to, I mean, yeah. Shops are closed and it's going to be difficult getting them back open, but we've lovely plans for them. And yeah. we're launching a fundraiser tomorrow, which is um, fab because we have Mary McAleese involved and Brendan O'Connor and Mary Kennedy, and it's going to be fab. So watch out for that link tomorrow. I'll send it yeah. to you. Um, okay. Kind of an intimate webinar, but it's it's really, really fab. Uh, advice for you know, mind, body and soul. 
Yeah. Um, but it's really, really interesting and really good. And we're going to just see how it goes because, I mean, we all, if we don't evolve, we're going to die. And we have too many children dependent on us. We just can't let ourselves die, you know? No. So we have to battle on. And I mean, we just, you know, I, I'm not sure. I've, we've turned the ship a few times. I'm not sure. After the recession, we turned the ship. And I'm not sure that we can turn it this time. But we certainly will give it a good go, you know? Yeah. We won't. Um, really. Okay. No, you will turn the ship because. Um, Everything has changed and nothing has changed. So, so talented people haven't become untalented now. Good, good organizations like the one you run is still a good organization. You know, it, in football, it's, what's the expression? We haven't become a bad team overnight, lads. You know, so, so, so some things haven't changed at all. We, our confidence may have taken a hit. Our outlook about what's going to happen in the next one, two or three years of course, that's all taken a hit. Mm -hmm. But we haven't become untalented, if I could put it that way, either mm -hmm. overnight. So all the amazing people that you have working with you, uh, that you're surrounded by, there are still going to be amazing people four or five months from now and next year. So no, I totally agree. And they absolutely are. I mean, no more than all the people I've been talking to for the last two months on this, just sure. different people in my life. Like, I'm surrounded by amazing people. And it's the mm. only reason I've been able to have chats that so many people are watching because I'm talking to amazing people all the time and I'm really mm. lucky to have all those people in my world. So, yeah. and we do attract each other. It's a bit like you, which I've listened to your theory, like twos attract twos and, you know, yeah, yeah. theory. So I do think yeah. you're hardworking and you're passionate about something and you love what you're doing. You, you end up having coffee with the same kind of people. You know, you definitely yeah. do. You and know? guess what? You'll also, you'll also work until you're 80. <laughs> that's i hope i do that's my i you, i'm sure. definitely taking your lead on that one yeah of course yeah, so, yeah. Any, um, any have you any nuggets before we go because these things yeah, can't last too long what's your what's your I'd like, well i'd just like to end on one note maybe it's not necessarily you know uplifting or anything but it's just kind of where i think we're at is that, and i i think that um Almost all crisis, crisis comes from neglect of some kind. You know, the financial crisis came from poor financial husbandry and kind of no, no regulation. So there were kind of two things neglected there that helped create the financial crisis. Uh, this crisis now has come from um, neglecting the planet, you know, so, uh, and, so, and health, so let's say if somebody has a health crisis, the idea is it's come from neglect, which means that um, they've kind of neglected a certain part, so their body wants to get their attention. That's the idea of a crisis. So the planet wants to get our attention now, and by God, it's found a really fantastic way to do that. Um, so when we get to the other side of all of this stuff, um, there's still a, there will still have a climate crisis. And that's going to come back and hit us again and again. I guess what we have now is we have some idea now what, what to do next time around. I heard somebody talking yesterday about pandemics and they were saying that they are, they are actually impossible to predict. You never know when, where. They said that the joke among scientists is when you've seen one pandemic, you've seen one pandemic. You haven't seen them all. Oh, yeah. So most likely there are going to be others. Uh, so that means um, at least now we have a sense of what we need to do much quicker and much earlier and much faster, maybe. So that's the, the, that's the bigger view. And, the, and then the more local view is we need to know for ourselves then personally, um, what, what do I need, need to keep an eye on that I don't neglect in the meantime? So that could be my health. I guess it's my health and it's our relationships with the people who are closest to us because now we're being forced together again, whether we like it or not, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think what, it's a bit too early yet to say what's the lesson from all of this, mm -hmm. but there's no doubt that um, neglecting something will create a crisis. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's really just to get our attention. Uh, and I think uh, all those years ago, there was a crisis with kids in Russia that got your attention. Uh, and they're so lucky in a way that that, that worked out for them. But we just need to keep an eye on ourselves now uh, and make sure we're not neglecting something really important and really basic.
I think. But the planet has now got our attention. Uh -huh. No question about that. Fair play to Mother Nature. <gasps> yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Neil O'Brien. It's always a pleasure. You're welcome, hon. Keep well. Like, yeah, hug and a kiss to say goodbye. But anyway, <laughs> we're unprofessional anyway. But keep it's great to see you. And I'll talk to you soon. And keep safe. And mind you, you know, keep, keep safe. I'll see you somewhere. Take it care. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.